Hi guys, this is James from Cannabis Place. Today we're going to be doing a quick run through of the effects of cannabis and alcohol when driving. Not mixed together, but we understand the effects of alcohol when driving. We don't have too many beers and get into the car behind the wheel and drive home uh, because that's unsafe. Now with cannabis becoming legal uh, for medical use and soon to be legal for recreational use in Canberra, uh, we're going to run through just a few pointers and we'll leave the full link to this article below if you want to read on. So in 2020, uh, in Canberra, uh, alongside medical cam uh, cannabis reforms, uh, we're actually having uh, legal cannabis for recreational use, which is going to be pretty exciting. So with Canberra becoming the weed capital of Australia, a lot of health groups and political groups are really concerned that there's going to be like a rise in car crashes and people aren't really sure how it's going to, uh, we're going to handle it. So uh, the Royal Australian Asian College of Surgeon, uh, Surgeons uh, saying that this will lead to more deaths and injury on the road, which is a little concerning uh, as driving uh, while you're under the influence will impair your cognitive motor function and may double the risk of motor, motor vehicle crashes. So that's pretty scary when they say it like that. So uh, a lot of people, there isn't much education on the use of cannabis the effects of it and driving or well, we understand you probably shouldn't drive but you know a little bit more information could be really helpful outside of just uh saying that this you're going to be in danger while you drive if you're under the influence of cannabis so we'll break down um the main points here so when you drive you require concentration you require coordination and rapid reflexes so alcohol it greatly impairs your ability to drive effectively and increases the risk for accidents. So roughly four standard drinks uh, will cause high levels of impairment in psycho psychomotor function, short-term memory, reaction time, hazard perception, concentration, and hand-to-eye coordin hand coordination. So in 2020, it's common sense not to drive while drunk. Uh, you have a few beers and you'll take an Uber home, you know, that's totally fine. We've been educated enough by the schools, by our parents, by government saying, you know, don't risk it because one mistake and you, know, you could end up in hospital or worse. So uh, that's pretty scary. But with the effects of marijuana and cannabis and driving, there are many misconceptions. So with the use of marijuana and how it affects people, there's still a lot of studies going on about uh, the effects of marijuana on the human body, like what's the dosage, what's one standard drink comparison for one standard like marijuana, it's still not quite there yet. So what we do understand is that marijuana impairs driving performance. That's a fact. There's been research that's done on this enough in North America and some in Australia to really, you know, just say, okay, that's not a good idea to smoke or, you know, have uh, cannabis and then drive. So what it does affect is it affects the alertness, the uh, concentration, coordination, and reaction time. So at glance, you, it would seem that both alcohol and cannabis will have similar effects that increase the dangers of driving. So the main difference is cannabis lasts between one to three hours. And Australians who use cannabis, they use it in moderation. So they use it once or twice a month versus alcohol where they use it two or four times a week. Now, the limited ac accurate educational content that's available on the effects of marijuana and driving, there's a lot of people confused. Now, do you see cannabis uh, as the same as alcohol or do you see cannabis as being like, uh, I can have cannabis uh, and then drive? That's a big question that's been asked to Australians. But what the evidence is showing so far is that it will impair your ability to drive. So uh, one thing is what happens after the legalization of marijuana. So with all the political groups, they're saying, okay, this is bad, it's dangerous, everyone's gonna get into car crashes. Well, we look at like California, we look at Canada and see what happened over there post uh, legalization. A lot of the same problems were being talked about over there. And we uh, actually found out that uh, mo it's mostly young teens, uh, who were not really educated on the use of marijuana and driving that were having the biggest problems. And uh, there weren't that many changes to the, um, the car crashes. So only one in five of the car crash victims under the age of 18 tested positive for marijuana. So it was mostly alcohol still. 
as it's uh, it's alcohol is more frequently uh, consumed by people and it's more of a party drug or it's more of a, uh, a drug which is alcohol uh, that happens like after work or you know by surprise and people still think that they can drive or something because they don't want to take public transport. So I'll leave the rest of the article down in the link below. So let me know what you think. Is it okay to drive after having um, marijuana? Or would you say that the government should enforce it the same way that they've been enforcing drinking and driving? So leave a comment below, like the video, and read the article if you want to learn more information about this. Thank you.